Did you know that Redshift for Cinema 4D has an easy to understand workflow for shading complex looking volumes such as clouds? The way to integrate external volumes or VDB files into Redshift is via the so-called Redshift volume object from the Redshift entry in the main menu. This offers the possibility to link such a VDB file or even an animated VDB sequence in its path field. Once the path has been selected, a simple preview of the object is displayed in the viewport. As a preview mode, let's choose Points. Maximum Points display defines the resolution and Prune Threshold determines how exactly points fill up the volume. In this example, I've selected the VDB sequence of an animated cloud from the great guys at the pixellab.net, see link in the video description. In the Animation tab, I clicked on Detect Frames to read out the attributes of the animation and I used Start Offset to select a slightly earlier starting point for the animation before frame 0. In the timeline, the seemingly complex VDB sequence can easily be scrubbed through. The volume can be positioned anywhere in the scene, but please note that for scaling the volume, Cinema 4D's object mode must be used. In order to make the volume object visible to Redshift, we have to provide it with a volumetric material. We create this in the Material Manager under Create, Materials, Volume and assign it to the Redshift volume in the Object Manager. Double-clicking on the material icon reveals its nature as a simple Expresso-style shader graph material. Here, a Redshift volume node is connected to the volume part of the output node, a really simple setup. The volume node itself contains all the settings to make our cloud look translucent and fluffy. Three attributes are prominent in the node. Scatter, Absorption and Emission. In simple terms, Scatter is the equivalent to Diffuse Reflection, Absorption the equivalent to Transmission and Emission, you name it, to Self-Illumination. For Scatter, we first have to define which volume information, a so-called channel, scatter refers to. Click on the small triangle on the right to find presets for popular volume engines. For redshift volumes, the density channel is available, which is also displayed in the information field at the bottom of the redshift volume object. This is the channel we refer to. The next step is to adjust the coefficients, or let's say the weight, for scatter and absorption. Both coefficients are initially set to 1, which gives the cloud a very dense and dark look. As absorption is the equivalent to transmission, it becomes clear that the first thing to do is to reduce this value. In our case, a value of just 0.01 shows the appropriate transmission. If scatter is also set to above this level, a reasonable result is obtained. And here the rule of thumb proves that the coefficients of scatter and absorption should be about the same. Further on, we head over to the Advanced tab, reduce the shadow density a little and that's it. For fine-tuning the level of volumetric light bounces, we still can go to Render Settings, Globals, Trace Depth and gradually increase the parameter Volume Depth. If necessary, please be careful here as this value can heavily increase render time. So, for many cases, a value of 1 is just fine. Scatter, absorption and emission each have a color gradient for remapping their respective coefficients. In these color gradients, the left knot affects the lower density areas of the volume, the right knot the higher density areas. Besides remapping the coefficient, this gradient can of course also be used to distribute colors across the volume. And for a density independent coloring of the attributes, the field tint can be used. At this point, a small but very useful feature should be mentioned, which is particularly useful for backlit situations – anisotropy. By default, the light in the volume is scattered isotropically, that means evenly, in all directions. A positive value changes this to an anisotropic, more directional scattering away from the light source. This creates a fringe of light, a typical effect in sunsets. A negative value, on the other hand, produces a rather blunt-looking backscattering back towards the light source. But what is emission all about? Well, emission fundamentally changes the look of our volume due to its characteristic of self-illumination. To do so, 
We also assign the channel density to emission. Then we set the coefficients of scatter and absorption to 1 and narrow the gradient of absorption considerably towards the lower density areas of the volume. After that, under emission, we load a flaming color gradient from the Asset Browser and change the emission mode to Color Ramp. Boom! In no time at all, we transform the cloud from a cool rain dispenser into a glowing fireball. But back to the original result. Our cloud sequence from the Pixel Lab is now finished, has piled up nicely and is ready to pour its load on the rainforest below. Please have a look at the finished project for German television via the link in the video description. If you like this video, press the subscribe button and don't miss the next episode of Did You Know Redshift for Cinema 4D every cloudy Wednesday on this channel.